all my batchmates have gone on to do fabulous things. Some of the better known uh, yeah. uh, batchmates of mine are Ankur Variku, who is okay. written to epic shit. Okay, uh, he was your in in your class. Yeah, in very early stage, com about the, the founders, founders yeah. right? And as I said, it is the conviction with mm. which they tell their story and yeah. how they intend to uh, execute on mm. on the plan. It took us almost six years to raise our first million dollars and uh, today where we stand yeah. is uh, we manage close to about 550 600 million dollars on the assets mm -hmm. we made 70 odd investments yeah 38 full and partial exits wow. uh, we've made investments not just in india we also have funds for uh, the region which mm -hmm. is uh, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka and yeah. Indonesia and one for Africa as well. People think uh, money is the only requirement to grow businesses, mm. right? But that's not true. Yeah. Every business has a certain gestation period, mm. right? And you cannot short change that. Mm. You cannot just say that because I'm putting a hundred million dollars, something that used to take 24 months will now take two months. Mm. Ain't happening. Not possible. Yeah. Thanks, Sushma, for coming to our um, studio and for doing this interview with us. Very excited to know your journey because you started from uh, doing engineering and now you're here, uh, a partner at a fund. So tell us how it all started for you when you were doing engineering. Did you even have a thought that, okay, finance is the field that I would want to explore? Thanks so much, Radhika, <laughs> for having me here today. Uh, I'd love to share my life journey yeah. so far and see if you know someone can benefit from uh, this story so uh, basically i'm a bangalore girl uh, mm. coming from a good south indian family yeah. uh, and uh, in south india uh, irrespective of whether you're a boy or a mm. girl uh, you're supposed to be either a doctor mm. or an engineer okay and uh, you really have to be really bad off if you're not <laughs> one of these two so then there were not really too many options yeah. that were open and we were not even yeah, even a thought wasn't entertained Okay. Uh, that you know maybe we could mm. consider something else but did you have any other thoughts of course of like course what? I was so I <laughs> used to live very close to the national law school okay and I used to see the students there mm. and you know I, I, I was enamored by the people yeah. they were so articulate so uh, so uh, with it in, mm. in terms of knowing things around them yeah. and so I, I really was very keen to join uh, law huh. at one point and uh, my mother was like completely against it saying that okay. you know this is not for good South Indian girls to study you should just study <laughs> engineering and that's it. Oh my god. And so yeah so uh, there were very very, very strong reactions yeah. to it and so I said okay fine engineering it is. <laughs> Okay, otherwise you would be a lawyer today. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even explore it. <laughs> yeah, but since uh, you did that against your wish, of course, uh, you must have made up your mind then, ki, okay, engineering it is. But then when you started studying it, did you like the subjects? What do you think? <laughs> we, you're not an engineer now today, so I'm sure you just coped up. <laughs> yeah, so no, I managed, I managed pretty well. Uh, so I did my electronics hmm. engineering from one of the better colleges of uh, Bangalore yeah. so obviously moving out was not an option it mm. had to be in the city and why uh, not an option strict parents that's why you know uh, no, nothing to do with strict it's anyway Bangalore had so many colleges mm. right so uh, why need w w what's the need to mm, move yeah. out so that's and when I got it into the the best college there and they said yeah this is where you need mm. to study and this is where you will be doing it yeah but yes did I enjoy <laughs> it so so 50 if 50. I did I would have been in <laughs> doing Correct. something more there but yeah I, I did survive mm. and it was a very enriching four years yeah uh, but was very happy to get out of there <laughs> <laughs> So when you got out, you know, lots of people in MBA at least are engineers and you're one of them who chose uh, that path. So how did you decide that, okay, uh, I want to pursue MBA, that too from one of the top colleges? Was that on your mind? Uh, no, actually it was a very interesting journey. Uh, so obviously after engineering, I had a couple of job offers in 
uh, IT startups in those days mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I choose not to take those uh, opportunities and I started uh, into our family business mm -hmm. which was in engineering design services. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I found that a very exciting phase in my life because mm. that's where I saw firsthand what hustle meant, mm. what bringing in business meant, yeah. the ups and downs of, uh, of running a show, mm. of managing people, uh, of being responsible for paying salaries yeah. and uh, you know when you're, you're just 22, 23, it is a very daunting mm -hmm. task. Yeah. Right, so uh, it, it was four tough years mm. of my life, and but I learned so much from that time, mm. uh, and I'm so grateful that you know I I decided to stick on and do something like that and yeah. didn't take a, a cushy <laughs> IT uh, yeah. job, which was uh, what my other option was. I uh, learned a lot, um, made me most of the person mm. I am today. Yeah. And uh, and uh, interestingly, uh, I took a decision that you know I think I'm done. Uh, I wanted I want to explore bigger avenues, mm -hmm. and that's when uh, I applied for my MBA. And yeah. So you said that some of those learnings that you had from your days at MBA, you still apply t till date. So what are those learnings? From my MBA days, yeah. uh, actually even pre MBA days, right? Okay. So both yeah. pre MBA and MBA. Uh, my MBA obviously was a very short uh, MBA, it's a one mm. year program um, and thank God it's only a one year <laughs> program. <laughs> it was right? very intense. It is very intense <laughs> and um, I think my biggest takeaway from MBA was uh, the kind of network I built mm. while at MBA and uh, also you know I really lucked out. I had one of the most amazing batches at ISB. Yeah. All of them have gone on to do such wonderful things in, in life yeah. uh, today and still they are very dear, they continue to be very dear friends mm. uh, and I think that's what really is my takeaway from uh, the MBA. Yeah, yeah. The degree is a degree ah. at the end of the day, it's the network uh, and you know even today I can just pick up the phone and tell them that hey guys you know I'm, I need to understand this or yeah. you know I need help here mm. or uh, can you connect me to someone? Yeah, and there'll be ten people ready to do that. Wow. So I think that's the power of uh, the MBA. Yeah. Yes. So, so what kind of um, peers did you have back then, and what are they doing now? Because right now we are also very young, and we want to do MBA to build that peer network who will be helpful to us, you know, in the coming years. So, why don't you tell us about? How was it then and how is it now? The difference. Very <laughs> different, right? I mean, while on campus, I don't think anyone expected each of us to turn out yeah, the way we correct. did, right? And we all had our own plans in our heads yeah. that, you know, I want to go into this field or yeah. I want to do this. And, and when people would ask, go oh, mm -hmm. prepare for this interview question in five years, where do you see yourself? <laughs> Boss, if someone had recorded my old <laughs> interviews, I don't know what all answers I've given there. But yeah, we we I don't think any or many of us at least mm. had a plan of this is where we want to be yeah. or this is what we want to do. Mm. Uh, all my batchmates have gone on to do fabulous things. Some of the better known uh, yeah. uh, batchmates of mine are. Ankur Variku, who is okay. written to epic shit. Okay, uh, he was your in in your class. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, and what what a fabulous, fabulous yeah. human being! Like wonderful human being. Yeah. And I don't think even he ever dreamt that he's going yeah. to be doing what he's <laughs> doing, right? So um, uh, him, um, of course, uh, many many others. Mm. I mean, I can't even start naming them. It will yeah. run into a very long list. Huh. Uh, all overachievers, all have gone on to do well for themselves mm. and uh, and still all are very grounded and happy people. Yeah. So that I think for me is is very important. Right. Do you have any fond memory of Ankur? Uh, mm, From mm, ISB? <laughs> uh, many, many, many. Uh, so, you know, we were all part of a, a group uh, and incidentally I was aspiring to get into uh, FMCG mm. for some reason and uh, you know I was like you know I want to get into FMCG yeah. marketing uh, because it was like the coolest thing huh. in our group 
right and we were all part of it and ankur used to uh, come and guide us mm. on you know how how we should be uh, handling interviews and even then he would be the gyan mm. guru there so uh, and so it's it just those interactions it it used to be you know we would only get time late at nights mm. to uh, to have these practice sessions yeah. and uh, just the fun the banter the kind of conversations we used to have they were really nice <laughs> yeah and then uh, since you said you wanted to get into fmcg that to into marketing um how did you end up in finance uh, did you interview for those companies which came on campus how how did that go the placement time so clearly uh, people didn't think i was fit enough to get into fmcg and marketing why uh because i had already come from a real estate uh mm. kind of a background mm. right so and you know how jobs are once you're branded as a certain yeah a uh, skill set person that's where you end up going mm. and so obviously uh you i did interview uh, mm. with quite a few of them and everywhere the question was why do you want to do mm. fmcg why do you want to get it's so hard you will start as a ma- management trainee yeah. you have to go to the field and i was like yeah, i'll do everything i'll huh. do all of that <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh, yeah, i guess i don't know destiny you can say whatever yeah. and it didn't work out mm. and so uh, it was a real estate fund that i ended up joining so right. i've always been on the investing side of mm. things ever since um which actually now when i look back you know it was always there in me mm. um i was always interested in knowing how business is done how do you make money yeah. like even in our even while growing up in our homes uh, i would keep asking how do they make money from this business what is, you know how much will they end up taking home yeah. and these things are not entertained in the kind of households uh, <laughs> we grew up in right like, yeah. wh- what's in it for you? why why do you want to know how huh. much money they are making so mm-hmm. but that that was how i would always be thinking and so it just made sense i think to get into uh, investing and yeah that too it has worked out well for me so did the fund came into your campus and that's how you got in or how was it yes that? it was a campus hire okay. so i had uh, the fund did come it was called tcg real estate hmm. the chatterjee group yeah. uh, and um, yeah so you remember how was your interview with them uh yes i do <laughs> i do uh so two of my ex bosses uh had come for the interview yeah and uh, it was fairly straightforward interview process mm. uh and you know at the end of the day i got the offer and yeah so i i knew a senior of mine who was already there okay so when that offer came i called him and mm. said uh, you know i've got this offer so he's like oh congratulations uh, so are you going to take it yeah. you know how how senior right. can be i said uh, should i and <laughs> and he's like uh, yeah i mean it's mumbai and it's a great company yeah. you should join so mm. i said okay let's let's do this yeah <laughs> usually because in companies they take 8 and 9 rounds but that yeah. wasn't uh, the case no see this was for a very specific yeah. role and it was almost something that mm. i was already doing yeah. in the past right so it was mm. like an extension of what i had been doing so yeah. they saw it that way and uh, so i ended up joining and the day i joined the i found out that i was actually going to be replacing someone so okay. and that it was that person's last day and yeah. i was like Oh my god <laughs> that's big <laughs> shoes to fill right? yeah 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 you can't be like thrown in the deep end on day mm. one but yeah but that's uh, how you get to learn yes. and uh, you know sail through challenging yes, times yes. but how is it in working in a real estate fund which predominantly is male dominated yes but you know i never realized that mm. i mean it it was not uh, so obvious to me because even in previously i was in the real estate mm. uh, business and it is predominantly mm. men and you barely see too many women yeah. in in these setups so it was it was it what it was it was very matter of fact mm. for me uh it's only off late that you know now you hear where are the women yeah. there are not too many and that's when i look around oh yeah <laughs> there are not too many women. yeah <laughs> but uh, it, that was how it was yeah. i don't think Tabhi was it was the work yeah we were, we, we were all just focusing on getting our work mm-hmm. done and you know thankfully nobody even discriminated yeah to a very large extent like they were like you're a resource you need to mm. you need to deliver 
Right, right. So that's that. So what so that were was some good. interesting projects that you worked <coughs> on? in your time at the real estate fund uh so the real estate fund was interesting because it was at its absolute peak uh okay. this is this is 2006 ha huh. uh to 2008 ish just the pre lehman period yeah, yeah. right and you know the the mumbai real estate scene was going like bonkers half the buildings here didn't exist yeah. in bkc and uh, tcg used to be one of the uh, developers who was bidding for land parcels Correct. in bkc and see i didn't even come from bombay so i mm. didn't know much uh, and it, it just seemed like barren land everywhere <laughs> and everyone's like oh this is going to be so valuable that's going to yeah. be so valuable and for me it's like, it's like, it looks like <laughs> a dump <Correct>. so <laughs> but the first day i uh, i joined i remember i was uh, i had i was dragged to a bhumi puja Huh. uh because uh, tcg had won their first land parcel okay. in bkc okay okay uh, how much is, was it for uh, okay i don't remember the number now but huh. uh, obviously it's a big big amount thousands of crores not thousands but it, it this is back in 2006 huh. right so uh this is now the tcg where i think um, city bank office fifc is there na huh? yeah that's the building yeah right. so There was nothing there, huh. and uh, first thing I said, "There's a Bhumi Puja issue show up." Yeah, so yeah. That. So yeah, that that's how it started, and it was interesting to see how things start popping up, and you're like, "Yeah, this bet paid out well." Yeah, wow. <laughs> so, like you said, that only um, you know visionaries can sometimes see what will come out of something that doesn't exist at all. So, as you grew up in your career, and now that you are an investor yourself, that invest in startups, how do you think um, visionaries? ideate what's going in their mind and make the other person believe that okay this is something that's going to come true and you should bet on me yeah no uh, you know i i meet some of the most amazing people in <laughs> my life right like yeah. my, in my day to day life uh some of the entrepreneurs we meet are so inspiring mm. um just the energy in the room when they walk in just their presence is is at a different level right okay. i mean the way they think the way they believe they will execute uh, many of them have already done it so mm. um uh, and initially you know yes you're right when visionary say something it can seem so like a, a whack job and wondering yeah. and you'll be wondering like you know what is what are they even saying yeah but uh, but if they do know how to follow course mm. they do know how to deliver they do know how to execute yeah. and that is the power of uh, of being a thought leader and yeah, yeah. executing on it so that's entrepreneurship correct if you can give some examples as to when a founder walked into your uh, maybe conference room and it just uh, lit up the whole room with what he was saying okay i'll tell you a very interesting story yeah. in fact i i i think probably spoken about it uh, before yeah. also but um so we have this uh, practice in avishkar where uh, whenever there's a, a interesting founder where we've had couple of discussions about mm. you know what they're building we tend to have a a, a full team meet the mm. founder kind okay. of a session which is about hour hour and a half yeah. it can be very intimidating for huh. many founders right like i mean you walk into a room yeah, right. full of people who you think are smart huh. or uh, you know or at least who look like they are smart and But they uh, are smart right <laughs> actually entrepreneurs are the smartest yeah for their own industry no they are the smartest really right? yeah. why do you say that because they know what they are talking and they know what they feel yeah. be doing right <laughs> we are just listening to their story and trying to figure yeah. out what they are up to but uh, yeah and uh, so we have these sessions and uh, there was this one a uh, meeting we had uh, where there were two boys and i'm saying boys they mm. were just fresh out of engineering okay. college who came to our meeting room huh. and it's a long meeting room and there were like i think 12 or 15 of us sitting all yeah. around and everyone's looking you know in the poker face <laughs> staring at these two young boys yeah. and i like what, what do they what are they even building mm. so they came uh, came to us and this is before they got to be well known is yeah. we are going to send out satellites huh. in space and everyone's looking at each other <laughs> like you know really uh, wh- wh- what 
<laughs> and uh, and is that how this started <laughs> yeah 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 that's okay. what they said we want to build the next sa- uh, micro satellites huh. that will be sent out in space huh. and we were like okay yeah <laughs> um, and and as a caveat see we had an impact investor mm. and we do look at impact outcomes mm. when we make so this was not something that would have fit into Correct. what we were doing but the story was so fascinating that yeah. at the end of that one hour of huh. their presentation i think most of us stood up and we were in awe of those two young founders wow it was <laughs> fascinating how like what was the they were able part? just the vision hmm. and they've done it huh? okay now now it's been what for 5 years they they've done it mm. so um, they've executed on it and uh, it that time they were nothing yeah right they it was just an idea in their mm. head and the way they communicated it and the the confidence the conviction with which they were you know saying see sometimes there is a little bit of ignorance we all understand that yeah but this there was you could see that they were seeing this through Hmm. It was playing out so beautifully in their head yeah. and they were able to communicate it to all of us. Hmm. That very few people can do. Correct. Right? And and hence to convince people that you know we yeah. are we can do what we want hmm. to do. That was something. What's the company name? It is called it, it is called Pixel. Okay, Pixel. Yes. Yeah, yeah. They've grown very big yes. now. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So did you all invest or no? No. Okay. Do you regret investing? I regret <laughs> not having participated in their journey yeah. because all of these are entrepreneurial journeys right yeah. and fascinating bunch of guys mm. and it's just that you know we are a fund we have fiduciary responsibility right. to as investors we have to stay true to what we huh. do so right. this wasn't something we could have done and something in your uh, particular sector where you were blown away by a founder's pitch where you actually have invested too oh many many yeah many of them any recent one yeah so i'll i'll tell you of one story mm. uh, so these were uh, again two brothers yeah who had come to us and uh, uh, they had come from the us uh, to south bombay boys saying that you know we are going to disrupt the way agriculture is done in india yeah and what the way farmers buy things mm. we're going to change that mm. so we're like okay uh, how and then so basically the the company's name is agrostar okay the two two brothers were shardul and shitanshu yeah. sha and uh, they had this uh, vision of being the amazon for farmers okay right so that why why do farmers have mm. to move out of their farm to yeah. buy uh and even sell things why can't they do it yeah. from their farm mm. to their mobile phones nobody had done something like this okay. it wasn't even envisaged yeah. at that point in time which year was this uh this was back in 2011 12 12 oh 13. back then yes okay yeah 13 hmm. maybe yeah and uh, and then they had come for a very small ask of i think 4 crores or hmm. something and after hearing i was a boss 4 crores mein nahi banne wala ye right this is not something that you can achieve with 4 crores we like what hmm. you are saying we like you guys hmm. right? and see in very early stage companies it is about the, the founders, founders yeah. right and as i said it is the conviction with mm. which they tell their story and yeah. how they intend to uh, execute on mm. on the plan because entrepreneurship is a very hard journey right yeah. uh, and it is lonely as right. well and they there will be ups there will be downs mm. but what we are trying to judge is will this will these people stick the course yeah right and that conviction we had in mm. them and that's how we went ahead and supported so how them. much did you invest if four crore was uh, less yeah yeah so i think we then ended up putting about a million million and a half okay. in them that time yeah um, must be one of the um, biggest funding rounds in the seed stage uh no that that was pretty much what was happening okay. around but in agri 
so Haan. these are one of the first few agri yeah. uh, mm. tech investments right and uh, and you know today they are going to be about 1000 crores they wow. uh, f- fin- they they like full stack in terms Haan. of you know backward integration exports mm. market linkages everything right yeah. so they've come a long way they've raised millions of dollars mm. from multiple investors they have all the m- big names of investors yeah. on the cap table but you know that's still very close to us but we were the first investors Correct. right and that whole journey we saw yeah you know that's what we hold very close to the kind right. of work that we do so have you exited now of the company or are you still there uh, so we would really believe in their business so much yeah that we have invested from multiple funds okay. and we have exited from our previous funds okay so you you are still a part we are still today. a part of their journey Okay. We will see them. Yeah, too. <laughs> I'm sure they will soon uh, do an IPO. Where I hope so. I <laughs> hope so. The IPO, whatever, right? I mean, uh, we uh, see we w- like seeing businesses that become institutions. Yeah. And uh, this is one such journey. Right. So since you are um, uh, an investor who comes even at the ideation stage or has done it in the past, you've seen all the three stages of ideation, scaling up and exit. So taking this example of the agri tech startup only, how is it that you scaled them up through the years that now they are more than, um, you know, 1000 crore company? Okay, I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> right? And it's not about just this company, any company. Yeah, like uh, how to scale up. Yeah, so... Um, ev- Every company, every sector has certain milestones to achieve. Mm -hmm. So, 0 to 1 has its own set of challenges, 1 to 5 has its own Uh set of challenges, 5 to 10, 10 to 100, Mm -hmm. very unique, Mm -hmm. right? And uh, the playbook for each of these are very different. Uh, And so, uh, what is required, however, from us is that we understand it. Mm -hmm. And we are j- so we are just the co-passengers in this whole journey. In, in this whole <laughs> journey, right? They are going to drive Correct. the show. All our job, and we can't even be backseat drivers to say yeah. hey, there's something wrong. <laughs> <not." laughs> that yeah. doesn't work either. So we actually have to partner with them mm. in many ways. In in saying that you know we are with you. Uh, yeah. th- maybe this is how you should build the organization. Mm. Put in place these kind of systems, processes, policies identify the right set of talent so yeah. zero to one normally the challenge is identifying good quality mm. uh, talent yeah. attracting the right talent because mm. see anyway you are on a your bootstrap mm. you you don't have very big budgets yeah. so attracting talent bec- always becomes a challenge mm. so how do you ensure that they are able to attract the right set of talent yeah. Uh, you know and bring in good good culture within mm. the organization bring in good corporate governance yeah. these are all different stages in the org- what kind of management to build right. at what stage obviously it can't be an overkill of bringing in you know just mm. bring all the top people on day one yeah that won't work either mm. right so it's it's how do you keep incrementally yeah. building the organization right. so that's what uh, it's all about yeah and how do you suggest a startup partnering with others to you know scale up because sometimes they think that only okay 100 institution is enough then uh, an investor says okay, okay no make it 1000 so how do you do that uh, you mean uh, you're talking about customers or yeah both uh, customers and partners who would um, give revenues to the startup sure. no so there um, it's uh, it's not as easy as it sounds right uh-huh. because uh, obviously capital is a constraint mm. they have capital and talent yeah right these are the two main factors that one needs to keep in mind mm. when they are building businesses yeah. uh, you can aspire to get 100 partners mm. but for the 100 partners you need people to right. go after them you need people to execute on mm. uh, on behalf of them and only then will it eventually translate to revenue. Yeah. So, yes, if you're sitting with a watch chest, mm. then maybe you can yeah. uh, dare to do something like this. But most startups are bootstrapped, have yeah. limited capital. How can they mm. prudently uh, build something that is sustainable? Yeah. Right. So, so then that that is the math that goes mm. back and forth. That. Should it be 10? Should it be 20? Right. Uh, what should be, uh, what would be a good outcome? Mm. 
and what will be a great outcome yeah you know and and then we fine tune along mm-hmm. the way got it and you recently also invested in a startup called move farm in their uh, series a itself so how how did you discover them because sourcing of deals is also a very difficult task especially today where every fund wants to take the best deal yes <laughs> yes no so this uh, um, move farms yeah we had been tracking them for a while uh, in fact uh, this came Uh, so within Avishkar, we also have an advisory business called Intellicap, huh. and they keep trying to attract good quality companies to uh, you know uh, for knowledge sharing mm. and things like that. And so there was an insure tech event that they had hosted, yeah. where they were inviting all startups who were doing some work, innovative work mm. in the. insurance space yeah and that's when move farms had applied to them okay uh in uh, for that in short tech uh, incubation mm. and uh, they had won the award also yeah so ever since they had been on our radar that you know there's this interesting company that's claiming to do something yeah. in insurance or uh, also mm. uh, let's keep tracking them okay so then we waited we saw how they were uh, progressing mm. uh, and finally when they came to us uh, they had become a full stack dairy as a service yeah. company a uh, very different from the story that we were tracking Correct. them for and uh, and insurance was is just one sliver of mm. their overall business mm. but what they were disrupting was so unique and so differentiated that that was the moat of their business right i mean um, so india is one of the largest mm. uh, has one of the largest cattle population yeah we still are predominantly agrarian mm. uh, so uh, you know and most of the farmers that manage uh, cattle mm. cows and buffaloes uh, are small holding farmers right most of them hold less than 5 uh, cows buffaloes mm. at any, any at any given point mm. in time and and because it's so unorganized they don't even know whether they're making money from the business of managing yeah the cattle right and which is sad because for them for farmers time and money both are scarce mm. right and uh, if if they don't know better then it's not good for anybody yeah uh, and so what this business what uh, move farms is trying to do is trying to disrupt uh the way dairy as a service mm. has been done in in india right so yeah. they're almost trying to create the the white revolution that amul did huh. uh but in in the in the ba- the complete back end of yeah. uh, of uh, the value chain of mm-hmm. cattle Got so uh, that's what we found very exciting so for how many years did you track them until you invested So this uh, event that Intellicap had done was, I think, Sankalp event. Is that? Oh, sa- huh. you know Sankalp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, the, no. This was not a Sankalp. This was just for insurance uh, okay. specific event. It was obviously before COVID, mm. so I'm guessing it was 2018, hmm. 19 type. So, so did they like pivot from their? No, this was one of their offerings. So okay. insurance, huh. cattle insurance is a very big requirement. Yeah, yeah. So they were like, so they have created a lot of advisory, uh, a tech to identify the quality of cattle mm. just by looking at you know the facial features yeah, yeah. And, and stuff. So they can tell you uh, exactly the quality of the cattle, mm. what is going to be the yield, what is going to be the what is the age of this cattle, what how many milking years they have ahead of them, okay. all of that, right? And so all these are very valuable for uh, both lenders who are mm. lending to uh, to farmers. Yeah. as well as for insurers because mm. one of the biggest um, frauds that happen in the agri space is the loss of livestock mm. right because half the time the livestock doesn't exist yeah. and then they say that boss the cow is dead now you give us our money right so um, and that's why many of them run into losses mm. with just these kind of claims yeah so if someone like a move farms is able to bring in that predictability mm. that this is a genuine cattle yeah this cattle is tagged mm. is geo tagged and uh, this is the age of the this is the the true age of this mm. cattle yeah they are able to underwrite the risk better right. than insurance company so that's also an offering yeah so were they like one of the first to do this or there are many others who are doing it now uh so the people are doing different pieces of this business hmm. so there are people who are only doing cattle trading 
there are some businesses that are only doing feed Huh. there are some businesses that are doing just this insurance okay. and and loans to cattle yeah. in different pieces uh, i have not come across anyone who's doing all together end to end full mm -hmm. stack dairy as a service offering yeah. to uh, farmers right right from buying of cattle giving them the right mm. nutrition giving them the right veterinary care yeah. uh, giving them financial service uh, products insurance and creating market linkage for the milk output yeah. as well so they've created all uh, mini world in itself for the cattle yes <laughs> <laughs> wow but they must have started with one offering right uh so yeah this the first offering was actually want they wanted to test the hypothesis that are people really buying cattle huh. and if yes what is the frequency so okay. they started with the trading hmm. to see log khareed rahe hain yeah. iske liye demand hai hmm. क्या कर रहे हैं इसके साथ ऑल ऑफ दैट सो दैट्स हाउ इट नाइस नाइस एंड सिंस वी आर ऑन दिस टॉपिक ऑफ टॉकिंग अबाउट कंपनीज आई आल्सो रेड समवेयर दैट यू इन्वेस्टेड इन एक्विटास व्हेन इट वाज जस्ट इन द बिजनेस प्लानिंग स्टेज बिकॉज़ ऑफ ऑफ कोर्स द ट्रैक रिकॉर्ड ऑफ फाउंडर्स सो हाउ हाउ डिड दैट कन्वर्सेशन गो एंड यू लाइक लाइक यू सेड यू यूजुअली कम इन सीरीज ए व्हाट वाज इट दैट मेड यू इन्वेस्ट इनटू देम व्हेन दे वर लाइक जस्ट in the business planning stage yeah so equitas uh, predates me also with yeah. avishkar but i've heard of this story uh, many times um in the past we also used to invest in greenfield or you know seed stage mm. zero revenue mm. companies uh equitas is run by a gentleman uh, mr vasudevan mm. uh, and he is again a visionary uh, and the way uh, he was looking at businesses was he had like just turned the way uh business was being done in the microfinance space mm. and apparently when he first told his pitch uh he was completely disgruntled by all the investors because obviously investors were asking a hundred questions mm. uh, what's your business plan how are you going to execute yeah. and this guy had been a career banker right, right. and he had run big books mm. uh for uh, large uh, banks and nbfcs and it's like i'm at zero yeah. you know i getting to 1000 is not my concern i yeah. just need capital to get mm. there and just the way his his vision for the business how he intended to grow it he was one of the few to fir the first companies to put tech from day one right okay. and this is back in the day when nobody even used mm. to talk of uh, tech in financial services okay so um, this was in which year This was in two thousand nine, two thousand nine. Two thousand and nine. Yes, this wow. is way back, and uh, and and because he was such a great mm. entrepreneur founder, uh, Equitas has been one of the few companies in our portfolio that has the shortest time from zero to IPO. Okay, how many years? Uh, that was about seven and a half, eight years. Okay. Yeah. that was the shortest time yeah and you require the gravitas the kind of leadership yeah. that uh, vasu had to pull that off okay I only I mean after that of course we've invested in many more companies mm. and all are executing brilliantly yeah but you know that the, the pole position huh? the pole <laughs> position leadership position that only few you have that right but do you think that comes with your past record of also managing teams of course of course so exp you, you, know, you cannot take away from the yeah. experience of people uh, he had always managed mm. big teams and that's something we always look at yeah. so even when founders come to us mm. uh, you know while we did like the pixel folks <laughs> for us we do tend to uh, have a bias for people who have some experience, experience in in building things yeah. in the past right right also uh, you recently invested in checkbook too yes. so how did that happen the sourcing of the deal oh that was i'm getting all secret sauce <laughs> from you <laughs> no 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 secret sauce like, these are just very interesting journeys yeah. for us so checkbook again very interesting story mm -hmm. uh, vipul uh, walked into our office one day huh. and um, He I knew y'all before. As in, he knew from someone that you know there's this fund called Avishkar okay. that uh, that looks at financial inclusion, uh -huh. and uh, he started drawing things on the uh, whiteboard, uh -huh. right? 
I'm going to do this. Uh, MSMEs, uh, the small Kirana shop guy is going to be in the center of my uh. things, and he is underserved. He doesn't have financial services. Uh. He doesn't have this. He doesn't have banking requirements. He he has a lot of banking requirements, uh. but he doesn't have anyone servicing him for mm. it. Uh, I'm going to be his be all end all financial service products. I'm going to be the uh. front end banking uh, that nobody has done uh. before, and so we heard him. Yeah. And we said, "Good for you. Let's talk later." <laughs> Why <laughs> later? <laughs> because it it just at that time seemed so novel okay. and so ahead of its time that um, he said each of the things that he was looking to build huh. was an opportunity in its own. Hmm. So he was talking lending, fintech lending itself huh. is a trillion dollar opportunity. Yeah. He was talking insurance for MSMEs. That is a uh, eighty thousand crore mm -hmm. kind of an opportunity. He was then talking of op helping in current accounts and uh, uh, providing them with access to uh, rewards and stuff like that. That is a massive market, mm -hmm. right? So each of them were like micro startups in yeah. its own right. <laughs> And we have this guy who's saying that I'm going to build everything, huh. uh, and uh, and we're like, you're going to become like the Kotak huh. uh, uh, for MSMEs, and he's like, exactly, that's what I want to. Oh my god! <laughs> All the best, <laughs> and uh, and you know he left, huh. and you know it just kept playing in our minds that, boss, there is a need. Yeah. Right. There clearly is a need. Huh. Nobody is servicing this this segment. Mm. Um. If he can pull it off, it mm. would be great. Yeah. And um, so you all just wanted to wait and watch. No, so we we just thought this. He yeah. went, we went, and okay. we. Okay. Then again, after a few months, he came back uh, saying, "You know, I I've uh, started putting things in place, mm. and this is I want to give you an update. That's how it always is, right?" Yeah. So he came back again. Again, he drew one <laughs> big thing on our yeah. whiteboard that th I've already finished this. You know, I'm I'm looking at this. This is working well. Yeah. This is wor so we are like, good for you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you are very tough guys. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I be, see. Uh, uh, that's how we will also get yeah. that kind of conviction, right? And then. Again, he went. Okay. Then the third time he came. And yeah. This was after how long? So this was over nine months. Okay. Right. So this is over nine, nine yeah. to ten months. And then again he came, and this time I said, "Boss, I've heard this story too many times." <laughs> so I pulled a few more of my colleagues. I okay. said, "You know, even you just sit and listen. Does this make sense yeah. to you?" And uh, colleagues also came back with a similar feel hmm. that you know. दम तो है पर करेंगे कैसे हाँ करेंगे कैसे और इतना कुछ है राइट एंड देन वी स्टार्टेड मीटिंग विथ हिस्स टीम ओके ही हैड अ फैब ही हैज अ फैबुलस टीम अ टेक टीम अ पर्सन जस्ट लुकिंग एट मार्केटिंग एंड इंश्योरेंस एंड लेंडिंग सो ही हैड एंटायर टीम विथ हिम ऑल एक्स बैंकर्स एक्स इंश्योरेंस फोक्स a uh, very strong product oriented technology mm. guys and so we said you know if anyone can do it it's these guys yeah and so we said okay let's start with a small check and okay. see how they build and i'm so happy that and of course the minute we did it covid hit huh. right which is like the worst period for anyone mm. to start anything yeah and um, so they went through their two years of real bad stress mm. uh, because of the macro uh, situation but today where they stand is uh, he has built exactly to the t what he had drawn on our whiteboard yeah um he said you know when we were making a plan he said i'm going to do a lakh of current accounts in a year and just to give a perspective mm. banks some of the banks yeah. uh, do at best about 20000 current accounts That's a it? year right and he's talking about a lakh yeah. and we're like yeah okay <laughs> so normally when founders do tell us <laughs> uh, things we take it with a little pinch of salt Correct. a bucket of salt depending <laughs> on what <laughs> we assess yeah. and we said okay theek hai <laughs> 1 lakh 500 likh lo and uh, <laughs> when he launched uh, the current account product yeah. in he he started giving me daily updates on yeah. whatsapp in 3 months they have opened 30000 current accounts okay 
in just three months. Yeah. And I was like, what? Really? Uh, so sometimes, you know, we get it fully all wrong. Yeah. And uh, it's, it is the founder's conviction at the end mm. of the day to build things. Wow. Yeah. These stories are literally like uh, giving me goosebumps. How do they do it? No, and it's a lot of sleepless nights. Yeah. I know they go through a lot of stress at home. Mm. Um, we are not very, yeah. uh, <laughs> very um, easy to say the least. So, yeah. Um, there's a lot of pressure being an entrepreneur, hmm. right? And and of course, you keep looking around, and everyone around you is turning into a unicorn. Yeah. So there's that that uh, FOMO as huh. well that you know, uh, uh, hey, wh- what is it that I'm not hmm. doing right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's just cutting out the noise, hmm. putting your head down, getting your work done, sticking true to yourself. Yeah. Nice. But out of all these stories, what I gauge is that you at least took two to three meetings to get comfortable with yeah. the founder and the idea. Has it ever happened that in the first meeting itself, you were convinced at least 80% there? You know, in the first meeting, we are convinced with the person, hmm. right? Like we get a feel yeah. that, you know, uh, do we, we get a feel <laughs> that's more intuition. But as investors, and that's the kind of investors we are, we don't normally only go based on intuition. Hmm. It's not like, you know, I like you. Here, take the money. We yeah. cannot do that. So, um, but there are people who do that. And it works <laughs> very well for them. It works very yeah, well for actually. them. Yeah, uh, actually. But we are more careful, thesis-based kind hmm. of investors. We're like, agri mein kya ho raha hai? And, that, and in, within agri, we will start picking yeah. in this vertical what's happening, in this vertical okay. what's happening. Then we map out who are the players in mm. this. Then we we know exactly who the players are, huh. and in that we start tracking people. Okay. Right, and only then once we are comfortable, it yeah. has to work both ways. Right. They should get comfortable with us. We should get comfortable with yeah. them, and then we start uh, the conversations. Mm. So many, ac- actually, most of the deals that we have done have been nine to twelve month engagements. Okay. Um, First time we normally never write. It's not the first person who walks into our office we give a check. Yeah. Very, yeah. very, very happens. Hmm. Happens what? No. Uh, only in Vasu's <laughs> case. Yeah. Only Equitas. <laughs> right. It was a dinner table conversation huh. and uh, they came out and they said we're writing a check for this. Okay. Uh, so there was a lot of resistance from the IC yeah, uh, yeah. at that time saying that, you know, how can you write a check like that? <laughs> yeah. So, but but that ha- that has been the best investment for yeah, our yeah. fund. Yeah. Right. The best. So, what kind of returns uh, do funds like yours make when the companies go to an IPO? Uh, again, uh, there's no one answer for this. Yeah. Uh, e- each company performs uh, differently. Um, for us, uh, of course, Equitas was a multi-bagger exit. Uh, 15x gave us about a uh, 80% uh, IRR wow. kind of a return. <laughs> exceptions. Yes, right? um, big exception. And uh, yes, but it, it did give us a good playbook mm. insight into you know what a great company should yeah. look like and what a great company could deliver. Mm. Uh, but most of our companies are uh, well performing companies. Yeah. Uh, we ensure that these are built as institutions that last. Mm. Uh, so all our companies, you know, conti- have been around for 10, 15 years. So, you know, however right. long that we have supported them and beyond. Yeah. And that's, that is what we pride ourselves mm. on. But how many exits have you taken till now? Yeah, so uh, so we've been investing for the last... Uh, started in 2001. Sorry. Yeah, it started in 2001, yeah. but we started investing in full earnest in 2007 onwards. Oh, what was it doing before that? Um, so small investments here and there. Like angel uh, the investing? Not angel, it was through the fund, fund. But it took us almost six years to raise our first million dollars. As a fund? As a fund. Right, but okay. so back then, yeah. and you know, uh, relatively unknown. And here you are saying, I want to raise it for impact and yeah. for rural enterprises. Mm-hmm. So it, it was hard. Yeah. But after the first million, that's when you know, in full earnest, we we raised two funds. Mm. 
the first two funds were uh, an aggregate of about 32 million dollars yeah uh, that's when i came in right right and uh, today where we stand yeah. is uh, we manage close to about 550 600 million dollars in the assets mm. we made 70 odd investments yeah 38 full and partial exits wow. uh, we made investments not just in india we also have funds for uh, the region which mm. is uh, bangladesh sri lanka and yeah. indonesia and one for africa as well yeah. probably the only fund manager from india to do this in multi geography okay wow. right and still sticking very true yeah. to the impact correct uh this is so yeah. that's what we have achieved in the oh. time that it's we've actually been avishkar in itself uh, to <laughs> it do this <laughs> so we we believe uh, we are entrepreneurs ourselves yeah right so everyone within the avishkar group mm. are mini entrepreneurs uh. we all take ownership for things that we do yeah uh, and we take responsibilities for things that mm. we do and hence you know that's what we see as outcomes yeah but like you said you joined the you know fund when it was just about 30 million dollars and now it's more than 500 million dollars so how have you seen it progress what was the you know environment back then and what is it now oh, uh environment back then was hard right like yeah. uh, th- this is back in the day when the india had not given too many exits mm. to investors liquidity was a big challenge so like the kind of deals that we see now here is like every 12 months startups are raising money yeah. and you know people are lining up with term sheets of course now there's a little funding winter mm. and all that but otherwise you know there there's yeah. surplus uh, funds availability of different types of investors mm. um back in the day there was nothing yeah. so all the companies that we invested in we had to create right uh, we were we were the first institutional investor in all the companies so to give you examples uh, this uh, this company that will be going public yeah. soon called utkarsh small finance bank mm-hmm. um so the the founder of utkarsh govind ji yeah he used to head microfinance at icici bank okay and he actually came to avishkar uh, f- looking for a job it was huh. like i think an interview or something and um, and they, and in the interview uh, they asked what do you want to do and he said uh, you know i wish i could start my own microfinance yeah. company and he said why don't you start ha huh. he's like i'm like crazy i don't have the money to start and all like starting is not like that <laughs> yeah. uh, so then they said don't worry you start put whatever you can with huh. friends and family and we will support you mm. and we will bring other investors to support you okay. but you have to do this in a certain geography ha huh. and which was that it was in banaras <laughs> okay <laughs> why banaras out of all the places uh, two reasons one uh, was uh, uh, the avishkar group founder is from banaras so he said okay that is uh, that is one of the reasons huh. the bigger reason is uh, up is one of uh, the most un- was one of the most underpenetrated huh. microfinance uh, regions in india okay. so most of the microfinance guys were only focusing on southern states because yeah. the credit quality is better mm. the awareness levels mm. are better all of that right mm. but we had identified the whole up cow belt as we call yeah. it as um, an area that requires microfinance mm. uh, in a big way yeah. and not too many people were serving that area mm. and so we said you go start there we okay. will give you the money we will give help you with talent we will help you with the business plan oh wow uh start ha huh. and he took the plunge and he started and today oh. hopefully in a week's time they will be going public just now about now like now yeah oh. they will be uh, listing themselves so oh. he started as a microfinance he became a small finance bank and now he's going to list so oh. that's been a fabulous journey similarly in our other other companies also these uh. were professionals you know and professionals are from regular families right yeah, like yeah. they don't come with uh, baggage of capital baggage of capital they don't they don't even have that kind of yeah. visibility of capital mm-hmm. saying here take the money go play with uh-huh. it you know 
and so then to convince them go follow your dream mm -hmm. leave your job start we will support you yeah uh, and that's how we started even suryoday small finance bank started uh, in a similar manner okay uh, oh so you all were also the first partners there first then? first investors there but did he well. also come for a job to you uh, not to us uh, not to us to one of our portfolio companies okay yeah so he had come uh, huh. wanting to be a ceo there okay and uh, when obviously you asked uh, is this what you really want to do and then uh -huh. he said actually even i want to start oh. my own. <laughs> then he said why don't you start your own wow. <laughs> with support so the ecosystem back then huh. was that yeah like people were not wanting to become yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was not as cool as mm. it is today correct they wanted a security a job yes everyone had that security of job mm. many of them had reached a certain level where they felt they wanted to do more mm. and uh, it it was the right mix of talent capital timing yeah. and intervention all of these came together mm. and that's what we saw but today we see that you know the startup ecosystem is so vibrant right yeah. everyone is starting off something and mm. and there is no risk uh, or there's no shame of failure yeah right uh, most of them use it as uh, a calling card now right mm. like oh, i'm i'm a failed entrepreneur <laughs> back in the day my god yeah. people would not want to be known mm. as that and so and that's something great right mm. like for the whole e that's where innovation will thrive yeah. that's where people will work on new ideas mm. it's okay to fail i think also it, it's more to do with the millennials and gen zers yeah. right they have the the yes appetite. they have the risk yeah. take they also have the support from their mm. families uh yeah. they are much better off than yeah. maybe uh two generations mm. uh, above them right so that's what the environment has changed and so we yeah. felt that maybe we need not be the first mm. check writers anymore yeah there are enough people huh. to do that we understand building businesses now yeah so 0 to 1 there are others mm. who are doing it let's take them from 1 to 100 okay so that's the role we play now got it got it that's nice and you also said that um, you know when you started building your fund back in 2000s it took uh, almost about 6 years to even get 7 crores so how did the ecosystem develop back then when you also came in that people started accepting india as a destination to put their money in uh so back so when i joined in 2011 Huh. 2011 is when I joined, and uh, even even then uh, we would have to start with India is uh, a growing economy. We yeah. have uh, the the demographic dividend yeah. coming in. You know, I, I remember so many we have made so many presentations that India is so good, India yeah. is so great, India <laughs> is going to be this kind of an economy is going to grow at this rate yeah. and so on. uh but yes there was a lot of convincing mm. uh, that had to be done where the context has changed uh, or where it was earlier there was scarcity of liquidity yeah. right and because there was scarcity of liquidity there was scarcity of good quality mm. assets to invest in yeah and there was scarcity of good quality talent mm. right people were not willing to leave yeah. jobs uh there was a brain drain happening mm. a lot of people going to us working in googles mm. microsoft all of them today people are coming back from there yeah. to start up uh, companies uh -huh. in india right which is a fantastic shift correct capital is flowing into the country mm -hmm. uh, the innovative ideas are very very specific to india problems they are not saying i'm going to build a meet to that we saw somewhere yeah. else that we're going to do it here they are they are identifying large problems mm -hmm. in india and solving for them and that's what has changed significantly right. and like in the past our 1 dollar that we would invest had mm. to take them that far yeah. right because there was no um, leverage available on that 1 dollar mm -hmm. like we couldn't even crowd in a lot of capital yeah. to help them go further today our 1 dollar mm. can be leveraged 4 5 times yeah because for every dollar we write in there are other investors who come in mm. as well and of course the whole credit ecosystem is far more robust yeah so um, and it's thriving so there's venture debt and mm. uh, even the the regular banking credit yeah, system yeah. is so much more better so all of these mm. have 
made a big difference to uh, yeah. the ecosystem. But now that this ecosystem is growing, you might be uh, like so happy to see so much capital flowing in, right? Because you've been a part of it since a decade now and there was almost nothing. Yes and no. No, why? Yeah, <laughs> no, why is the... Um, it's... I think we foster good quality yeah. competition, right? Like the more this whole space grows, yeah. it's bet better for huh. everybody. Everyone will benefit, <laughs> yeah. everyone will make money. Uh, the only thing is uh, people think uh, money is the only requirement to grow businesses, hmm. right? But that's not true. Yeah. Every business has a certain gestation period, hmm. right? And you cannot short change that. Mm. You cannot just say that because I am putting a hundred million dollars, something that used to take 24 months will now take two months. Mm. Ain't happening. Not possible. Yeah. But in the process, there will be a, a lot of things that will end up breaking. Mm. Uh, cultures get decimated, organizations are built on a very rocky yeah. footing. Um, it's, it's, it's not healthy. Mm. It's not sustainable. And uh, and hence, I don't see capital being the only yeah. solution to uh, grow. grow. Yeah, that's a fair point. So that that's the. But if people are responsible, mm. then capital can take them very far. Yeah, yeah, right. But who were the kind of um, LPs who were investing back then, where there were there were uh, limited funds in India? Yeah. Uh, so uh, Avishkar, for a very long time, we used to only get interest from foreign investors. Huh. Uh, so all all the foreign uh, DFIs or the mm. development finance institutions really saw the work of Avishkar as a developing uh, f you know um, theme fund, okay. uh, inclusive fund, mm. right? So that's how the name impact investing came yeah. about. In fact, we've been doing this from you know when yeah. but impact investing as a term itself got coined i think back in 2010 11. Hmm. that's how late it got yeah. coined and then they said oh you guys are impact investors huh. so we're like okay you can call us that <laughs> <laughs> whatever <Yeah>. you, <laughs> you want to name us we are fine and so you yeah in fact i remember someone was telling me that in one of the lp meetings uh, this was some big uh, fund of funds sitting out of hong kong huh. they heard the story and again, same a room full of suits and huh. uh, our uh, chairman went into the meeting. That yeah. time he was much younger huh. and they heard him and you know, they're like, oh, very nice, very nice. Oh. And they said, you're cute. Uh, <laughs> and he said, what do you mean by cute? Yeah. Said, they said, yeah, you know, you're cute, impact is nice. So it, it'll be, it'll be small. Oh. And, uh, and that kind of pissed him off. Yeah. <laughs> like, in a big way so I think he he had a point to prove as well and huh. that's why we have reached where we have oh. we are where we are no more cute yeah <laughs> where we are no uh, we are now as mainstream as anyone else mm -hmm. could uh, want to be so that has been our journey yeah but that can actually be very uh, I mean it can take somebody off completely in a meeting so somebody says that yeah, but uh, it's it's free world. People yeah. can say whatever <laughs> they think, and uh, so yeah. Uh, when when you're fundraising, mm. anyone, yeah, you have to have such a thick skin. Yeah, you should I not know. let these things <laughs> affect you. So uh, back in the day, more it was mostly foreign money that was coming mm. into funds like us. Yeah, uh, only in 2018, 2019, when we went. Uh, for our fifth fund, mm. we started slowly seeing that the Indian family offices were more open mm. uh, to investing in this kind of an asset class. Okay. Um, and now in our latest fund, mm. it's almost 50-50. Okay. So, 50 so who are the LPs now? Uh, so most of the banks, mm. insurance companies, again um, many of the DFIs, yeah. the development finance institutions. Um, these are the large uh, mm. co corporate offices, uh, corporate um, arms of uh, the the fund of fund arms of corporates, yeah. uh, family offices, all of them. Okay, yeah. Did the chairman go back to that no. LP and tell him? No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's waiting that they'll come one yeah. day. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they will. <laughs>
<laughs> they may be they may be actually too small for us now <laughs> ah, i like that no we are not <laughs> we still getting there yeah so when are you fundraising next now so we've just we uh, we are in uh, our sixth fund we've just announced our first close uh, of about uh, 1000 odd uh, crores mm. um we will we are looking at targeting about 1500 crore fund so okay. we are in the last leg of closing hmm. uh, the fund okay and now it must be relatively easier for you to fundraise it's never How easy no <laughs> <laughs> it's never easy so what kind of questions do you get asked by investors because like you also said running a fund is fully like an entrepreneurial journey yeah no uh, so that's what i even tell <laughs> our founders that don't think fundraising is easy for us and difficult for you yeah. for us it's 10 times more difficult mm. right because for a founder he just needs that one investor to mm. believe in his idea yeah. and put him put in the money mm. for funds like us yeah. we need at least four maybe five investors at least mm. to um, to wa- to have conviction in us yeah. uh, to believe that we their money is safe mm. see because a fund business is a 10 year business yeah. right so they have to have faith in us that we are going to be around mm. that we are legit yeah. that we'll not take the money and do <laughs> stupid things uh, and that we will stick true to the themes that we have promised mm. right so that is something that uh, we focus uh, that's what uh, they always ask yeah. and of course as we mature from fund to mm. fund uh, track record yeah. exits how much money have you returned to investors yeah. what kind of companies have you created mm. those are the kind of questions okay so now since it's already have been a decade um, that you all had lps and i'm sure you might have given some exits also which were some of the really good ones that you would want to talk about the exits yeah. i told you about equitas which is one of yeah, our best yeah, exits yeah. Uh, and we're very proud of what he created and mm. what he is building as well <coughs> uh, another very big company for us has been credit access gramin which is okay. again a listed company it's in the microfinance mm. space um and you know it's it's considered to be the gold class when it comes to microfinance uh, yeah. today in the industry uh, what was the irr you got on that uh so there it was uh, mid uh, 20s okay 20 20 plus mm-hmm. uh, uh, percentage yeah. of irr and uh, then we have um uh in the agri business agrostar mm. has been a fantastic uh, returns uh, for us yeah um and uh, quite a few of them actually we had invested in this ethnic retail brand called jaipur okay uh jaipur uh, got bought out by uh, aditya birla uh, yeah. group uh, and it continues to do very well mm. uh, as a brand uh we we are also very proud of a investment we had made in uh, soulful which mm. is a breakfast cereal company yeah which uh, we had invested our thesis that time was investing in millets okay uh and millets is one of the most hardy crops mm. in india it is uh, it is domestic to india yeah. it uh, it requires very little water huh. and uh, it has very high yield uh, generating capacity for the farmer so okay. even before the government start talk, started talking about yeah. f- uh, doubling farm income right. millets and so on we had already identified that yeah. as a big area mm. and so when soulful came to us as a opportunity we saw that as a, a very very high impact commercial opportunity mm. to invest in and uh, i think in less than 2 years tata tata consumers came and bought us out okay yeah wow but these uh, how do you decide that okay this is the strategic acquisition that you'd like to do cuz sometimes there's a dilemma right do you want to build or do you want to get bought out yeah no so um it, those conversations always happen mm. uh it's see when you have uh you know some someone who's making an offer which will talk of taking this business further mm. up right and will grow it alongside you yeah then maybe they are better partners huh. than just you know what financial investors can do mm-hmm. and so that's when we have taken these kind of calls yeah so now soulful is a far bigger brand than what we could have ever done yeah and as, as investors uh, how do you evaluate the valuations while the exit 
is happening i mean very difficult exit or <laughs> even entry no yeah both and both <laughs> So yeah this is uh, it's it's more an art than science yeah. of course we try to justify it with a lot of science mm. uh, with a lot of data in, in fact at least today there's more data points available than back uh -huh. in the day when we were just trying to figure out what kind of value to give uh, how would you do it back then so there were standard benchmarks that we would end up taking okay. especially the areas the sectors that we were investing mm. in were not discovered yeah. sectors right Uh, even microfinance, we were the first investors to identify it mm. as a sector and start investing in it. Yeah. So there were no benchmarks mm. per se. Uh, it's just that we would take global comps. Yeah. We would see, okay, w what are the surrogates to something like this? Mm. Uh, see at what uh, what price uh, those deals were happening, yeah. and then say, okay, this is uh, this is still a sunrise sector. Mm. So give some kind of a discount okay. to it. And see, I, I told you there was a scarcity of capital yeah, environment, yeah, yeah. right? So the founder just needed money, mm. they, and they would say, "Just give us the money." <laughs> we, yeah. we don't understand valuation and all that. Uh -huh. So that's how we started. But uh -huh. now, of course, it's a far more sophisticated. So how, how space. do you do it now? So now uh, there are multiple. Mm. Uh, of course, now when I said we look at Series A, A plus, uh -huh. right? So there is a business plan. Mm. There, some of the businesses have cash flows. Mm. So. The worst is to do DCF, which yeah. which is also something that we do. But we look at comps, we look at other surrogates, like yeah. what are the other companies mm. doing. There's enough databases now available, mm. not just for India, but you know models that yeah. uh, that have worked in say in Indonesia mm. or uh, or say in Vietnam. Mm. We try to uh, uh, draw from that. Try to see. uh kind of triangulate it with what kind of exits we are seeing mm. uh and will will we make money yeah. if we enter at these kind of valuations okay. and of course we try to uh triangulate data with at the time of our exit mm. what could be the macro situation yeah. how would interest rates move uh, those aspects also play a role and mm. that's when we come up with a number yeah but there's is there any other method apart from dcf that's DCF is only it's like it's just <laughs> for paper right uh, DCF yeah. is not, not a preferred method for okay. most of us um this it's see what what are we trying to see when we are mm. making a valuation whether we will make money huh. by getting in at this price yeah. right and there are many other variables along the way that mm. we know play out because this is very cyclical business yeah. uh, there will be macro uh, situations yeah. say like a covid say mm. like a you know a demon mm. and those things you don't model mm. so you just have to factor in with some degree of uh, yeah. comfort that you know even mm. if things like this happen if you survive how much money will you make yeah 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 and for the benefit of audience uh, why is dcf not the most optimum uh, way of valuation see uh, for a for dcf you need a uh, cash flows that will <laughs> run into many many years yeah uh, like someone was telling me zomato they have taken dcf on 40 year cash flows to see when okay. they will end up making money and <laughs> stuff like that right so dcf never and uh, first of all predicting a cash flow uh. is that far out and then trying to put what your wax going to be yeah at that point in time uh, what your terminal value for growth is mm. going to be all those it it will give you nothing yeah right? very far fetched and, and it, it doesn't result in much right yeah. and uh, if you were to give those kind of valuations mm. to companies the founders will say please carry on <laughs> yeah <laughs> right it's a pain for the investors only to do it yeah 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 that's true but it takes a really great team to uh, do these kind of work that you guys are doing at Avishkar and predict that these will be the sunrise sectors uh, going forward so how is your leadership style uh, personally and how has it changed in these 10 years working in the same firm it's work in progress yeah <laughs> uh, i don't think uh, you know a uh, leadership style is ever cast in mm. stone but i do follow uh, a few uh, role models Uh, who are they? Uh, so one person who I really respect and admire is the chairman of Avishkar Group, which yeah. is Vineet Rai. Yeah. Um, and um, I have learned a lot from his leadership style. And and actually, his leadership style mimics a lot of uh, large tech business leaders as well. So I was okay. recently reading a Netflix uh, co-founder's book yeah. called No Rules Rules. Yeah. 
right? We actually have it here. Oh, yeah. You do? Ah, Ha, no rules. rules. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah, and so in this, wa- what it basically says is empower people, create yeah. a create um, a sense of trust, huh. um, especially in, in teams where you say it's okay to fail. Huh. I'm here. I'm here for you. Yeah. Right. If if things go south, mm. I I'm your backstop. Don't worry. Yeah. You know that's when you start taking certain risks, mm. right? And that's when you start pushing people to achieve beyond their means. Right. And that's something that was given to me, mm. uh, and that's something I try doing it uh, with my team as huh. well. Uh, I don't know how successful I've been, but uh, yes. So that, but that requires a lot of confidence, mm. uh, not only in yourself but also in your team. Yeah. To say that you know I I trust you enough mm. to know that you will not goof up. Right. <laughs> right. So. Uh, but apart from, um, of course, Vineet, who is um, in your own firm as well, any outsiders throughout your career whom you have looked up to? Um, many. at different stages mm. in life yeah. um some have been exceptional uh, leaders okay. uh, some were exceptional and then things went south yeah. so uh, at different points in time i have drawn from different skills of mm. leaders um my current obviously all time favorite is warren buffett okay. uh, not for his leadership style but yeah. see we are investors at the end of the day huh. we have to make money yeah we can do all this talk mm. of leadership and <laughs> oh yeah point blank think, is that you have to get money we have to make mm. money right and that only comes from focus <laughs> and that comes from like razor sharp focus of what we want to do mm. what we will achieve and how things will pan out right and that requires a a lot of work Yeah. Um and so that is something that you know it's work in progress again for me and mm. that's what I'm working for. Yeah. But how do you handle uh, conflict management even now uh, in the teams of the startups where you are the board member and in your own team also at times if it happens. See again uh, that has take over time I think <laughs> I have kind of uh, improved. Um it it can get very taxing mm. um the conflicts happen every day in in our business right um there is always some kind of back and forth that happens yeah. which might not be to your liking mm. uh but uh, it's important to understand the other point other person's point of view yeah. where they come from what their context is mm. right it might seem uh, weird uh, in the first instance it might seem bizarre for many of us but mm. uh, they are coming from some place that makes sense for them yeah and so i think uh, what i've at least learned is first understand where are they coming from mm. uh most cases i've realized it's just a communication problem ha huh. you know just some people say things in a certain way yeah uh the intention behind it is very very different ha huh. right just getting to the core of where is it coming from why are they saying what they are saying yeah. why they why are they saying it the way they are saying mm. it half the problem is solved right then. and i hate emails during conflicts right because <laughs> the if you start communicating mm. over email it will only it go down correct, south correct correct it's best to pick up the phone yeah. or even better to meet yeah. and resolve it in person mm. and i hate carrying grudges so um if if there is something festering mm. I like to go up front to that person and say listen this is really bothering me. Yeah. Did you really mean what you said? Huh. Or is there something else? Yeah. And yeah. I like resolving. It. So if they say no and you know I d- we didn't like what you did here or this huh. this, this tone didn't work for mm. me. Happy to say I'm sorry. Yeah. You know it, uh, I th- that that was not the intention right. and move on. Mm. But never go back with it in your system. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's an overtime journey yes. where you're constantly learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. But but um, what is it that really takes to be an investor for example? Many young people must be applying at your firm to work, but what is it that you would want to see in your team in terms of their skill sets? And and that's what people should know before they apply sure, for this sure. career. Yeah, no, that's a very very good question that you're asking, especially for you know the kind of audience mm. that you have. So one is of course the hygiene skills that we have, mm. right? Uh, the 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 basic technical skills, depending for the role that we are looking yeah. to hire, 
uh, you know, ma have, knowing how to make Excel models, mm. knowing how to make presentable presentations, <laughs> right? Like uh, those are the basics. Yeah. How how to do formatting in a Word document? Huh. That is basic hygiene technical skills. Right. So that's something we try to see whether you have and mm. that's a non-negotiable. That's non-negotiable. What we look beyond that mm. is um, the uh, the curiosity of a person, right? Yeah. Like how keen are they to learn? Because in the space we are in, things mm. are changing so rapidly yeah. and so frequently. So um, ha are they even keen on understanding mm. things or do they see this as just another job? Yeah. If, uh, if it is, then you know, I don't think this is the How do you place. make it out of a person? Because in the interview, they're all like, yeah, yeah, we love it, we no. do it. So, uh, so, obviously, there are ways to do it. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we kind of uh, throw case studies at them as mm. well uh, while, while we are interviewing, uh, you know, team members. Because we have to understand we are very small teams, mm. right? And we have to stick it out for mm. a very long period yeah, of time. Each one has to and be a it machine. Gets, <laughs> and it gets very intense also. So, yeah. Um, that vibe should be mm. right. So uh, we, we do check for these things. Uh, attitude for us is everything, right? Mm. And it's the right culture for us because, uh, in fact, for uh, in Avishka, whoever comes in, uh, we try to see if we all have a common purpose. Mm. And if you cut across the entire team, you will yeah. see everyone has a single minded purpose of creating impact. Yeah. And that's what holds us all together. Huh. So uh, we found that whenever someone has come with a different mm. requirement, <coughs> they have not stuck along for too long. They have moved on. Like what different requirements? So if people have only come saying, boss, I only want to make money. Huh. Right, there are a hundred other opportunities. We are just one more outfit here. Yeah. So this could be one of your stepping stones and then you will go on huh. to someone else who is going to pay you a little more, mm. a little more. But in Avishkar, what people come is for the impact we are creating, for yeah. the businesses we are creating. Mm. You know, like for for many, they wouldn't have even seen a Banaras. They wouldn't have known yeah. that there's a place called Samastipur in Bihar. Huh. These are the places we go and invest in. Wow. Right? And, and when you see these businesses yeah. growing, creating jobs, creating livelihoods, mm. where that farmer says that because of this company, I was able to do X, Y, Z. Yeah. Then you're like, boss. I'm doing something huh. good, <laughs> right? It's it's satisfying. Correct. And that is what keeps us together here. Yeah. And that's what we look for also when we when 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 we onboard mm. uh, team members. Then, do we have a common thread? Mm. And how do you promote people? Basis what? So uh, obviously we have different uh, levels. Yeah. Um, so we have a pre MBA program, mm. uh, which we uh, suggest we kept at two years so okay. we encourage people to come get gain the experience mm -hmm. from Avishka in fact uh, our chairman Vineet is right now at Oxford uh, as uh, teaching uh, impact oh. uh, as a program and, okay, well. uh, and like a permanent teacher then? Not a visiting as a visiting, oh, visiting faculty, faculty. Yes, nice. as a visiting faculty and it's very well received yeah um, in fact all of us have been invited to many uh, universities yeah, yeah. to talk about impact investing so, uh, you know, that there's that program where we encourage people to come, learn, uh, you know, work with us and many of them have gone on to very prestigious uh, B schools from yeah. there. Uh, Kellogg, one of our colleagues went to Kellogg, mm. one went to London Business School. Okay. Uh, so, th it, it, it's good to see. Yeah. Uh, them. Do they come back? Um, do they come back? Some have. Yeah. Some have come back. Uh, some have gone on to do bigger things. So that's good for us as well. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> references. Yes. No, I, it's always good to Correct. have uh, alumni Bigger everywhere, network, yeah. right? So uh, then we have the post MBA program mm -hmm. where people come in as associates. Okay. And we have a very clear path to progression. Mm -hmm. And uh, even in the path to progression, upfront we tell them what skill sets are required yeah. for you to progress from one level to the other. Huh. How much time it normally takes for a person mm -hmm. to acquire those skill sets. Yeah. And, uh, 
and we also kind of help in whatever yeah, way yeah. Uh, possible. Uh, this sounds so, interesting. If you could break it down, the levels and the skill sets at each level. Sure, sure. Like for example, uh, associate level person, yeah. right? Uh, they they are in the trenches doing a lot of number crunching, yeah. pulling out a lot of data. Uh, that that requires uh, very strong technical mm. skills yeah. and technical skills. I mean, of course, you have a certain hygiene level, mm -hmm. but it keeps building yeah. on. But then, for you to go to the next level, mm. right? What does it take? Mm. Uh, next level means your interactions with the founders will start. Yeah. That's when you start engaging with them. Do you have it in you mm. to have those mature conversations? Yeah. Right. Uh, even 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 if it is one L one level conversation with huh. the CFO, ki data bejo, MIS yeah, bejo. Yeah. Do you have that? Okay. Like, you know that that kind of a skill mm. set uh, uh, to to have the maturity to have con hold conversations. Mm. Though that's what we see as a, a progression. Okay. Then from uh, associate to associate director, associate huh. director to director, director huh. to managing director. Each okay. at each <laughs> level, uh, we s there has to be something new some switch in your mm. mind that you know that you are ready to be there okay right and you've actually gone through all the i've been through yeah i've been through the trenches and up there so yeah, yeah I've so been what happens it. next after the associate level uh, so associate associate director you know, to, uh, what uh, new do you bring to the table so like that? Uh, we try to see whether you know they have been able to build a network of okay. their own in the industry yeah. Can they pick up the phone and talk to other people? Huh. You know, uh, th that they should be known yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, out there. Uh, can, do people come and call you? Mm. Ask you, what's yeah. right? uh, that, that is something that we encourage. Then uh, at director level, obviously, uh, we try to see whether they, they, they can sit on boards. Uh, do they have the uh, do they have the the kind of maturity huh. to have those kind of conversations um, and so on? Then managing director is more like you know can 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 you make deals? Hmm. Can you get deals happen? Okay. Uh, can you get to do things that you know? Yeah, but I I see that there's a very thin line of difference when you become a director and uh, progress from there on. No, it's it's it. It's very it's obvious. Much more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you yes, recently uh, became a partner from an investment director. So how yeah. have your roles and responsibilities changed? So that's the thing. It it took me ten ten years to get there, yeah. right? And uh, and for me also it was a progression. Mm. So like initially I didn't even know. We were not given training of what to do on a board. Yeah. We had to learn on the job, huh. right? And we are sitting in a board full of dignitaries, like. <laughs> There's an XRBI chairman, there's someone else, and yeah. some banking chairman, and so on. And, and you're like, boss, I'm just an investor director <laughs> here. What am I supposed to do? Yeah. So it, it gets intimidating, of course. And uh, I, but you learn on the job. You you have to figure out what, what you have to say. When do you have to say it? Yeah. It has to be done at the right moment. Um, how do you hold yourself? Mm. Uh, how do you get deals done? Uh, and it's not always straightforward. Mm. It's not just investing, right? I mean, even during the journey of your investment, you you will have to re up. How do you take a call? Yeah. Whether you should re up. Mm. Or sometimes companies go through crisis situations. Mm. How do you handle those crisis yeah. situations? So that that doesn't come naturally. Yeah. That has to be lots of experience. Experience. Uh, some for some people, of course, they do have it in them, and yeah. it's easier. Uh, so things like that. Then leadership. Mm. How do you show leadership? Mm. Uh, do founders uh, trust you enough to yeah. talk to you? Will they pick up the phone and talk to you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, do they see you as leader enough mm. uh, to engage with you? Those are the kind of uh, changes. So, wow. and that comes with experience. Looks like a tough job, but the person who loves can really make it big <laughs> in this industry. Yes, yes. You should have the right set of motivation yeah. to be here. Yeah, but you said that you also need to do crisis management very well. So, I don't know if you would like to take names or no, but if you could just speak of a situation where um, a crisis hit the, the fund or uh, to you personally because you were invested, how did you sort it out? Um, there are many. I'm just trying to think <laughs> there are of an uh, <laughs> e easy situation. <laughs> See, there's always con conflict situations, ha, right? Ha. Especially when you're talking of many uh, stakeholders. Hmm. 
conflict is bound to arise because yeah. everyone's interests are not necessarily aligned, aligned yeah. right? So the founder has a certain expectation. Mm. The investors have investors who have come in at different stages will have different expectations. Yeah. Um, the management team might have a very different mm. expectation. So uh, one such uh, a crisis uh, moment was mm. during the the microfinance crisis that happened no. in 2010. Right, and because of which many of the companies came under severe liquidity stress, mm. um, and so much so that you know all all stakeholders had to take certain decisions on on how to get out of that crisis situation. Yeah. Um, for some, they all survived, thrived, went on to list. Mm. For some, unfortunately, it it got into such bad conflict situations that it reached a deadlock. Mm. So much so that the investors would not talk to the founders, oh. the founders would not talk to the investors. Um, there was a complete breakdown of communication. Yeah. Um, and you know the board was had become just a, a passive board. No mm. decisions were taken. So the company was not going forward, was not going backward. Yeah. And it just stalls, right? So then it's not it's not the best outcome for anyone yeah so we've seen those situations where we have uh, we have gone and salvaged values out of mm. uh, these kind of distressed companies yeah and unlocked a lot of value from mm -hmm. there got it so was it so like talking to the various stakeholders huh. convincing them that you know it's in your interest to do this yeah. to agree to this mm -hmm. telling the founder that you know why don't you convince these set of stakeholders to agree to a plan yeah. like this come on board mm. let's build this together you know th that's yeah. multi stakeholder uh, conversations yeah. that happen yeah yeah and you also very interestingly mentioned about uh, being on the same um, round table as the ex rbi chairman and other uh, dignitaries so you also said that you learned it on the job as to how to be a board uh, member and an observer so how was that learning for you and what's the role of a board member actually what do you do on that table <laughs> sitting in front of so many people yeah no so the the fundamental role of a board member is to have the uh, com company's mm. best interests in mind yeah. all the stakeholder mm. interest in mind right so it's not my fund interest it is not your fund interest it is not someone else's interest it has to be paramount the company's interest yeah right and within that mm. everyone has their own uh, interests mm. that they have to align themselves for but it's obvious right like if, if the company does well every stakeholder does yeah. well so that's that is the role uh, that's the fundamental role of a, a okay. board member and again, uh, see, uh, different businesses are different. Mm. So understanding the nuts and bolts of businesses, understanding the operational risks in a business, yeah. guiding the the founder mm. in the right manner, identifying problems ahead of them happening, yeah. and telling them that listen, uh, you know, there might be a challenge mm. uh, coming in the next quarter. Yeah. Why don't we start planning for it now? Mm. Okay. Or identifying problems in the business model today. Mm by looking at the numbers and telling them that listen uh, I see these areas need correction yeah. what can we do to fix it mm. can we have a conversation around this so yeah. uh, if you have a liquidity uh, situation mm. coming up how do you sort it out do you go for debt do you go for e equity okay. is, or is there something else that we could explore yeah um, uh, during IPOs mm. that you know all, all the planning that goes before an IPO all that is a board members role. okay and how do you ensure that you get to speak in uh, so many peop around so many people like by speaking like how <laughs> do you know when to put your point across i mean <laughs> <laughs> you should know when to put your point across I, I guess it comes with experience yeah 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 maybe once you see there how it happens yeah. then that's why you become an observer, observer first person and then a member. that's right that's yeah right. yeah got it got it and what's the gender diversity usually in the boardrooms that you've been a part of sensitive topic <laughs> <laughs> no it's getting better uh, I we, we we ideally prefer at least 30 percent representation mm. uh, but 30 percent in a five member board means nothing <laughs> yeah. uh, so there's still only one maybe Correct. one person sitting on the board mm. uh, but that's improving uh, slowly um, and uh, it 
it's okay. Now, uh, as I said, you know, after a point, huh. gender doesn't play such a big role. Yeah, only in big corporations for them it must be. I think. No, startups are not so big. What? Yeah, board me. Huh. No, uh, it it depends on what investors ask for also. Like yeah. when we when we try to bring mm. in independents, we try to bring in some women specialists. Uh, on the board so wherever yeah. i go we try to bring in either a hr specialist or mm. a marketing specialist okay. or or a technical specialist mm. who can add value to the company yeah yeah so that that's what we look at cool so we move into the last segment of our conversation which is the rapid fire round sure i'm hoping to get some spicy answers <laughs> let's try <laughs> so starting off who has been the most influential person in your life so far my mother and why So I lost my dad very early in life, and uh, she has been such a strong influence that I think whatever I am here today is largely because of her influence mm. in my life. Nice. And what would have been the alternative career option for you? I know you spoke about being a lawyer, but is that it or something else too? Alternate. You know, I think I would always been doing business. of some nature hmm. i don't know what but it would be making money <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah wohi to hota hai business ka essence ha but sabko chamakta nahi hai yeah yeah that's true <laughs> that's the only difference <laughs> yeah 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 and what is your um, most fond childhood memory um my most fond childhood memory was um so i grew up in a very very touched happy uh, household hmm. um and uh, like we had a big family so by while you know we were a nuclear family but extended family was very large and so all our summer holidays uh, we would spend with our grandparents where all the cousins would end up coming yeah. so we would be about 6 uh, 7 of us uh, and in our grandparents house and you know just those summer vacations were the best vacations that i remember even till today okay yeah nice. so that's the you know playing four corners mm. hide and seek and <laughs> the old houses had lot of corridors yeah. and hiding places and it just yeah. used to be so much fun and that's the beauty of living in uh, these kind of places because people who have their childhood mm. in bombay it's so difficult yeah. to do that <laughs> yeah. yeah i i i can totally understand because we grew up climbing trees yeah. jumping compound walls <laughs> I don't think kids here do that. Yeah. And what is that uh, one thing that you want to be remembered for? Except for impact. I know you will say that. <laughs> no, I was not <laughs> going to say that. I was saying I'm still trying to figure out what I want yeah. to be remembered for. But what comes top of mind is um I want to be remembered as someone who is kind uh and yet good at what I do. Hmm. Right? Um not not necessarily a softy but yeah 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 but yeah getting your work done in yes, a beautiful way kind yeah, yeah with grace yeah <laughs> yes that's what i want to be known got it and what advice uh, would you give to your maybe 18 or 25 year old uh, self when you just were starting your college or graduated from your college in fact any youngster today i tell them don't get so anxious ha huh. you know when like what <laughs> yeah. you just said right <laughs> we we think that oh my god you know everything is going to be bad and we can't see what things are going to play mm. out trust me it's all going to be okay yeah right as long as you have your bearings right <laughs> everything is going to be okay yeah so even now if i have to tell my younger self mm. i say chill everything yeah. will be okay you would also be anxious so what extremely so i was like a hyper okay. hyper person i would be doing like 10 things i used to be in theater i huh. used to do uh, trekking i used to uh, volunteer and taking kids out for treks hmm. um l- lots of things yeah. right so and and education studies was just one piece of right. what i i i was big time into theater hmm. i was into commercial theater so all, all those was there and yeah. uh, you know and then of course there's this an- anxiety that what should i pursue what will what will what should i make out of my mm. life and 
you know, someone had just told me that just chill, everything will be fine. <laughs> yeah, you're that someone for me now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. Say that 30 years down the line to somebody else. <laughs> I I hope you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what are some of the red flags in founders that don't sit well with any kind of investors? Um. So while greed is good, mm. uh, sometimes we find that uh, founders get to the extent of wanting to cut corners mm. uh, and that is that makes us extremely uncomfortable mm. uh, and so um, the first instance we get of integrity issues um, is a big red flag for us. Yeah. But uh, on Shark Tank, if you're seeing these days, that's what people are doing and still they I'm get I money. don't watch Shark Tank, yeah. so I wouldn't watch. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason <laughs> why you don't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's entertainment. Yeah, but for some people actually but that, that's not what, what, he what we get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that, that's not what happens it, with most investors. Mm. Got it. And what's been your uh, most uh, proud moment till now in life? Proud moments come and go. Uh, I think my proud moment was, so I had done a small program at Harvard Executive ex Education. Okay. And this was when I was, I think about four or five months pregnant, right? And uh. it is a very intense seven day program. What do they make you do? Um, so case study after case study uh. after case study. It's like a B school program okay. uh, crunched into seven days. So you're mm pretty much doing about 30 35 case studies in that period okay uh, and uh, and of course i physically also i was a little uh, under the weather yeah. and uh, it was exhausting mm. uh, period and so when i finished it and completed <laughs> it i was so relieved and so <laughs> proud of myself mm. to having done that yeah right? why did you take it at that time just <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to do it. I thought the time was right, and yeah. I said it's not going to stop me. So mm. why not? Right. And what's that um, one goal that you go back home every day with? What is that one thing that you think you have fulfilled and you're satisfied with when you end your day and you you can sleep peacefully? Of course, not having much to do in my to-do list, which is not <laughs> done. That is most important for me. Yeah. Going back home. Uh, with a right conscious that you know mm. today I I didn't hurt anyone unnecessarily or I've done good yeah. is a good day for me. Yeah. And what motivated you when you started your career and what motivates <coughs> you now when you've established yourself? I've not established myself yet. Thoda <laughs> bahut to kar liye hai. It's just one <laughs> one milestone in my yeah, journey. Yeah, it's a Are continuous process. Yeah, it's a continuous and there's long to go. Uh. But what motivated me when I was a uh, younger version of me, it was getting to be better or, or you know just getting to learn things, right? Mm. Because when you start you're at zero. So just learning things uh, step by step, getting better at it was my motivation. Uh. Uh, today my motivation is to get sharper, uh, you know, to, to fine tune those skills more. Mm. Uh, that is my motivation and that's what I focus on. Yeah. And what was the last thing that you did for the first time? Oh. <laughs> last thing I did for the first time. Mm, Could no. be as long back as one year also if that is what you did for the first time. I did skiing for the first time. Okay. And uh, about a year back. Huh. Oh, painful. So many <laughs> times I fell. But I like it so much that probably I'll go back yeah. to do it again. Yeah, that's <laughs> what an entrepreneurship uh, journey is also like. <laughs> yeah. Once you taste it, yeah. you want to do it. <laughs> that's right. I'm sure you might have worked with a lot of uh, bosses. What's that one leadership style uh, particularly in common that you have adopted from all of them? So what I spoke about, empowering people, yeah. right? I think if, if you empower people, mm. uh, the sense of ownership rises and when su sense of ownership rises, things do start falling into place. Mm. And that is one that I have adopted and I try to, uh, you know, kind of follow. Yeah. And if you like uh, look back 10 years, what's the biggest change that has come in you? 
I used to be a both personally and professionally micromanager. Huh. Like, like you know, I, also it is uh, a sense of self, right? Mm-hmm. Like, how confident are you about? How secure are mm-hmm. you as a person? Um, that you are allowing others to do what they want mm-hmm. to do. So obviously, ten years back, I was nowhere close. <laughs> so now, slowly, slowly, you get there. Mm-hmm. And now that uh, you have gotten there, you've built a team of your own. How do you get the best out of your people? Mm, communication, yeah. Uh, having open communication, so it's obviously not all days are good. Mm. Uh, there is friction. There, there is heartache. There is uh, shoving and jostling that yeah. happens. But you know, s- again, it's a sense of camaraderie, a mm. s- sense of saying we are in this together. Yeah. So it's best for all of us to have good outcomes. Mm-hmm. But that's how we. I think communication will work. Right. And since you're in impact, which sector particularly are you seeing the most activity in? Today, if yeah. you ask me, it's uh, uh, I'm seeing a lot of activity in the climate space mm. and a lot of activity in agri agri tech space. A lot of innovation, ris- yeah. disruptive businesses are coming mm. up in this area. Got it. And um, lastly, on the founders' um, note, uh, what is it that you would like to see in a pitch? Because some people just come with lots of slides and they just speak as if they are reading a script. So, as an investor, what do you expect out of a founders' pitch? Uh, in a founders' pitch, as I said, we invest in people, huh. right? And uh, so, getting to know the person and the personal journey is very important. Mm. So, yes, there is a business plan and all of yeah. that. But how is the founder connecting the dots? Mm. That where do they come from uh, and where are they going to go yeah right and is that coherent Mm. that is something that we seek when we talk to founders got it and finally uh, regarding the theme (coughs) of our um, interview which is uh, focused on bringing more women into the space of both entrepreneurship and investing how do you see more and more women joining this uh, space it's going to happen it has started happening Um, if if India needs to get to where we aspire to get, mm. you cannot exclude twenty uh, percent of the population that is already excluded. Right? Yeah. We need more women uh, entrepreneurs. We need need more women investors. Mm. We need more women in workforce. Only then will we get to where we are heading. Yeah, yeah. I'm so sure you'll be one of the forces. No, we are all, we are all <laughs> tiny specks yeah. of sand. We all need to go together. Yeah. <laughs> so yes. Right, but no. Thanks a lot for um, you know joining us today for this interview and loved uh, chatting throughout. <laughs> Thank you so much, Arika. It was so lovely chatting with you, and you did cover a lot of bases. <laughs>